Hey everybody, it's Miss Foley here, and I'm just here to talk to you about um, Rule During the New Kingdom and what comes after. Uh, today you've read a script, uh, along with our fine actors and actresses, about Hashaput and Thutmos III. I'm just going to give you a little more background information, and let's get started. So, in 1504 BC, Thutmos III begins his reign. Um, his father, um, Thutmos II dies unexpectedly, but Thutmos III is too young to take the throne. So his stepmother um, was appointed regent. Uh, so Hashaput named herself Pharaoh and would be the Pharaoh until the child was old enough to rule. So Hashaput, um, as we know, is the stepmother to Thutmose III, and she ruled for him in 1504 BC because of her son's age. And she did an awesome job. She had great success. Um, she had um, established peace with uh, other regions and traded successfully with the Nubians. Um, some of the things that they traded were ivory, leopard skins, and trees. So the Ancient Egyptians at this time were very wealthy. Um, it was a time of peace, not a time of war. Hashbut was doing her job and doing it well. But <laughs> when Thutmose III was of age, she refused to give up the throne. Um, and after her death, Thutmose, being a little pissed, decided to destroy all her statues, destroy all her artwork, and try to eradicate her existence from Egypt. Um, he was a little salty about it. But there was no denying, as you see in the play, that she was a very successful ruler, despite this conflict between stepmother and son. It seems like, as implied in the script, and implied uh, through their relationship, that Thutmose may have uh, killed his mother for the throne out of jealousy. Um, Thutmose led wars in Syria, Phoenicia, and Nubia. He did um, a little quirk about him. He was very educated, and he loved plants. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, um, he was very merciful, except with his own mother. Uh, he defeated a lot of, uh, like, Syria, Phoenicia, and Nubia, but he treated them with mercy. He didn't, like, totally eradicate them as they did in, like, ancient Mesopotamia. Um, but he wasn't merciful towards his mother because he felt that he was rightfully owned to the throne. And, that, and that's pretty much true. He deserved the throne. Um, it was kept from him. Is it worth killing over? Maybe it's for you to decide that. And after the New Kingdom, so... Um, Civil war left Egypt uh, poorly defended, and this is when Alexander the Great, on horseback, uh, comes and uh, Egypt fell. Uh, the Macedonians end up ruling Egypt for the next 300 years, and if you've ever known Queen Cleopatra, she was the last Macedonian uh, to rule Egypt. So, um, after the takeover of Alexander the Great, 300 years goes by. Queen Cleopatra became the last Macedonian to rule Egypt, and uh, eventually she fell to the Romans because of weakness and civil war, um, but instead of surrendering, she uh, commits suicide in 30 BC. So after the New Kingdom, things go really downhill for Egypt. Um, they're taken over by the Macedonians. They lose like their um, their own culture because it's invaded by foreigners. And it's run very well. Alexander the Great was a genius. Um, he conquered most of Europe and a lot of Africa. But towards the end, civil war and foreign invaders. Eventually, this dynasty fell with Queen Cleopatra being the last one. So this is just the end of the slides. Um, the reason why this video is so quick and without notes is because well, I forgot this section in the slideshow. Um, I'm throwing it in now so you have a little more background information and um, you can tie this in answering your discussion questions for the play. Um, I hope you enjoy the play. Let me know uh, what you think and I'll see you around.